70 million Americans receive Social Security benefits today, but the program is paying out more than it's taking in. Economics correspondent Paul Salman looks at that worrying financial gap and what can be done about it. And 39. And Social Security, the program most seniors rely on to support them in old age. But as you've heard, it's running out of money. As our paychecks make clear, Social Security takes money from us workers today, the payroll tax, to pay recipients, yesterday's workers, once they're at least 62. More workers than recipients? The money accumulates in a trust fund. But fewer workers, more recipients, and the fund gradually drains, as is happening now. In the early 2030s, the Social Security trust fund on the retirement side is going to exhaust its reserves. That's Social Security expert Alicia Minnell. Money is going to keep coming in from the payroll tax, but if nothing is done, benefits will be cut, and no one wants that. Well, as Social Security recipients, my wife and I sure don't, neither do the 70 million plus baby boomers born in our wake, nor do you, I assume. Do you think the money is going to run out? I kind of I have an inkling that it might. Do you think the money's going to be there, all these headlines about Social Security running out of money? I hope so. It comes out of my check every week, so I hope it does. Do you think the money's going to be there? God, I hope so. I would say no. There's plenty of reason for concern, says the lead author of the Social Security guidebook I helped write years ago, Get What's Yours. The system is completely bankrupt and whatever fix they come up with is going to be a much bigger burden on our kids and grandchildren. Economist Larry Kotlikoff wrote the coming generational storm back in 2004 has been sounding his alarm ever since. The way we're going uh, is either catastrophically cutting benefits or catastrophically raising taxes. So we're always doing too little too late. We're relying on future generations to be large in number and very productive in order to pay older people. So we're having each, allowing each generation of old people to go and expropriate their kids tell, and then tell the kids, don't worry, when you're old, you'll get your chance to expropriate your kids. Even if nothing is done, beneficiaries will still get 79%, almost 80% of the amount of money they're getting now, right? A lot of older people are surviving just on Social Security. So cutting their living standard by 20% is just not acceptable. So will Social Security beneficiaries actually take a big hit in just a few years? I would say I'm not worried at all because no congressman or congresswoman could go back to his or her district if that happened. The Democrats have long promised no cuts. And the Republican campaign now claims the same. In the Republican platform, all in capital letters, is a commitment not to take a penny out of Social Security or Medicare. But former President Donald Trump has now also said, Seniors should not pay taxes on Social Security. But that would actually deplete the Social Security Trust Fund sooner and mainly benefit the wealthiest recipients. On the other hand, there are fixes. One example. If they increase the payroll tax by 2% on the employee and 2% on the employer, that would solve the problem for 75 years. So right now it's 6.2% that I as the employee pay and 6.2% that my employer pays, right? Right. And so this would be? 8.2 and 8.2. So that would solve the problem by that, itself? That would solve the problem for 75 years. We're still in a point on the cost side where costs are rising because the ratio of beneficiaries to workers is rising. At some, but we're getting closer to the point where that's going to level off. Once that's leveled off, you'll be in a position where if we fix it for 75 years, it's fixed forever. A second fix? Increase the taxable wage base. You see, there's a cap on how much of a worker's earnings are taxed for Social Security. This year, $168,600. It rises each year with the average wage. But the cap used to cover 90% of all earnings. Now, with rising inequality and ever more income at the top, it only covers 80%. And there are a lot of people who say, just take the cap off, make the rich pay. I come down on just raising it to the old 90% target and moving along. 
That would hike this year's cap to about $300,000 and cover about 20% of the shortfall. If the cap were removed entirely, it would cover something like 70% of the shortfall. So why not just remove the cap? If you take it off and don't give people any benefits in return, it really breaks that link between contributions and benefits, which I think could endanger the, the popularity of the program. Okay, here's a third fix. Invest some of the trust fund in equities. In stocks? In stocks. Why is that a good idea? Over the long run, stocks have earned higher returns than bonds, which is, which is what is in the trust fund now. They also are a higher risk, so you have to be careful when you're talking about this. That doesn't sound like magic money. Still, over time, investing some in stocks would probably help. Now, a fourth fix was one last enacted in 1983, the last time Social Security was reformed. Raise the retirement age. Life expectancy is going up. It only makes sense to have people wait till they get their benefits. But not everyone can wait, even though you get 43% more at age 70 than at 65. Why not wait till 70, where you get more money? Well, when you're working a blue-collar job, sometimes waiting till 70 in your job is a little too late. Because it's too hard on your body. It's a lot of wear and tear. Manel has a tweak to account for folks like this. I think you want to do something that just raises the age at which you get full benefits for those who can work longer. And those people are people in the top half of the income distribution. So why haven't politicians done anything? On this, Manel and Kotlikov couldn't agree more. Nobody wants to raise taxes or cut benefits. It's political dynamite. It's, it's the third rail of politics. Congress is more concerned about the next election than the next generation. Meanwhile, waiting exacts its price. Some options do disappear. Investing funds in the stock market, for example. A prerequisite for that option is a trust fund. And so as that trust fund goes to zero, that one sort of goes off the table. I asked my 20-year-old grandson, Joe, what he makes of all this. So as you know, your grandmother and I get substantial Social Security benefits. Sure. Do you think you'll get those kinds of benefits when you're my age? No, I don't think so. I would say that I would hope, at least for me personally, that my income will be coming more so from the investments that I've made, the network that I've made. I'm not planning to rely so much on Social Security. Joe says he's typical of the younger generations Kotlikoff worries so loudly about. We have a lot of doubt and uncertainty, especially about the U.S. government, at least the circles that I'm in. And so it's hard to have confidence in any current system. Okay, final verdict. Will Social Security continue to be there or not? Something will be done, but it will be too little, too late, and it will impose even bigger burdens on our kids, and the system will still not be fixed for the long term. We've been talking to Manel for years about this. Procrastination is the long-running theme. We are so bad at fixing this problem. This problem has been so evident since 1990, and so we're in 2024, and I don't think we're really gonna move on this until 2030, and so a 40-year lag between the time the problem is identified and the time it's fixed is a little long for my taste. A little long, but not Social Security doomsday, and we may well be facing bigger problems by decade's end. For the PBS NewsHour, Paul Salmon in Boston. Thank you.